Okay, so time for a uh, oil change on the second star. Um, just like on a car or truck, we'll warm the engine up, get the oil loose so that you can uh, drain it out, except for we're not going to drain it. But startup procedure before we, uh, in time we start the boat. You can see why we need an oil change. Check your water. You got coolant. Give a visual inspection. Check your belts. Make sure you got nothing dangling in there that can get caught up. Not that wire, but it's strapped down. Okay. We were just running yesterday, so I'm not too worried about things. But check your oil. Check your water. Turn on the blower for three minutes before you start the boat, even though we got the hatches open. Just do it every time while you're fueling up. Can you turn the blower on, Jesse? Should have turned the blower on while I was checking the oil, but we've already done all that. Put it together for the video. So once you make sure you don't have any possibility of there being any gasoline fumes in your engine compartment, go ahead and start the boat. Let's go start the boat, let it run, get up to temperature. Okay, we got the engine warmed up to temperature now. One big difference between a boat engine and uh, your car or truck engine is it's really kind of hard to get underneath and pull the drain plug out and let the oil drain out. So you have to extract the oil from the engine with one method or another. There's a lot of different tools out there for it. You can get everything from a simple hand pump, you stick a tube down into the dipstick. Most of them are gonna operate from the dipstick. Stick a tube down in there, hand pump it out. You got attachments that you can get for a drill to operate it that, that way. This is trifical pumps. There's electric 12 volt pumps that you can hook up. There's systems that you can hard plumb into place so that you're just throwing a switch if you're uh, doing it on a regular basis commercially. But for us uh, pleasure cruising guys, um, I've got this handy dandy little tool made by EWK. We sell them at Go To Marine in a couple of different configurations. This one you can actually hook up to a compressor and uh, use your compressor if you want or use a hand pump to crank it out and suck it up into here so you can dispose of it safely. Um, before you even get to this phase, you gotta figure out where your filters are. And go to Go To Marine and order them. So that you got everything ready for your job before you start. So what I do is just grab my cell phone, go down here in the engine room, take pictures of all the filters. Got the numbers right there on them. There's handy dandy little cross reference charts right there on the website. So that no matter what filter you've got in here, if it's a Sierra filter, a Fram filter, a Napa filter, a Baldwin filter, one of, the, one of those, we've got all of those in stock except for the Napa filters, but uh, you can cross-reference them all right there on that chart. We carry the Baldwin filters, so I'm going with those because they're a good filter. These are fuel water separators, sorry, fuel filters. And then oil filter, got me 10W40 oil from Go2. And uh, really important to have a supply of these oil absorbent cloths around to clean up any spills, to keep in your bilge so that any spills that happen while you're underway or leaks can get absorbed instead of getting pumped overboard into the environment, which we don't want to happen. Uh, we sell big bags of these, you can get them six, nine at a time. This is a bag of 100 that we sell for 35 bucks. So, so yeah, find out what your uh, filter numbers are, go to GoTo Marine, check the cross-reference chart, get them ordered. We'll have them to you in a week or so at the most. And uh, you'll be all set and ready to go. Back to the oil change things. You are responsible for any spills off of your boat into the waters around you while you're in a marina. And uh, you know, your insurance might cover it if you have a catastrophic spill, but you still are responsible for doing everything that you possibly can to mitigate. So having tools like this, these are really great. Just throw them in the water and they'll suck up all the oil and separate it from the water. So you can just kick these and 
throw them away when you're all done with it. And if you do have a spill, throw a couple of these in the water, stir them around with your boat hook, and you can get a lot of the oil absorbed up that way. Okay, so we're all set up to pump the oil out. I have had to go get a smaller little hose from my kit that I have for doing this and just put it down in the dipstick. Now we're just gonna suck it out. And it's definitely gonna take a little bit. If we had the air compressor, it would uh, be a lot less work. Just know how much oil your engine takes because you don't want to overfill this guy because then it makes it a little harder to transport. And also got to make sure it, just in case you do have a bigger one. So if you're dealing with like a diesel engine or something of that nature that has more oil capacity, having another oil safe travel container to be able to transport uses the good old Venturi Act. That's what this guy right here really does. The best part is, if you need to relieve pressure, you can do it that way. Just in case you're coming up on being too full. Now that your oil is nice and sucked out, grab yourself one of these absorber pads to be able to pull your, so you can pull your hose out and not create a massive mess everywhere. Now that your oil sucked out, go and insert the dipstick back in. Make sure you got a nice clean funnel. Start adding your engine oil back in. But before that, we're gonna go change the filters. Making sure our our filters all our funnels all cleaned up. Okay, so we're about to change the oil filter so our location is in here so it's a little bit of cramped so kind of going to be hard to video it but as you can see i put down one of the absorbents another way that would be really good to do this is if you had a form of funnel into like a, a catch container but uh this is what we got so and this guy's on a little more than hand tight it's just supposed to be quarter turn after it gets tight or an eighth of turn the instructions are on the filter of how far you're supposed to do it now as you can see it's going to create a mess no way to get around it unless you have have it but that's why we have a bilge a bilge cleaner we have all these absorbents There we go. So now that you guys can see, the filter is out. Did a best job as I could to keep the mess minimal. You always wanna check your sealing surface of it. Make sure the gasket didn't stay on and clean up the old residual oil. Because the last thing you wanna do is double gasket it and then after you do that one if you double gasket it and you put it together it's going to leak and all that fresh oil that you just put in this engine just went all over your bilge and hopefully you catch it before uh start shooting out the side through and take some clean oil and get it around your seal Make sure it's all sealed up. This one, definitely depending on the engine, you would definitely want to prime the filter 
This one looks like we, uh, the location are able to prime the filter. So just kind of pour some oil in the filter. Don't want to dry start it. It's more uh, prevalent on some uh, different bigger engines or like diesels and such. Want to make sure you have the filters primed with, the, with oil to prevent dry starting and prevent wear on, unnecessary wear on the engine. Longevity of the engine life. Then get it hand tight and uh, follow the directions of the uh, one quarter turn or so. Do not use a tool unless specified to tighten your oil filter. It just makes it harder to take it off the next time. Just want to clean up all your oil, clean up, clean up your mess. Okay, so now we got the fuel filters to do. But pretty much the same same thing, going to be going through, pulling the filter, keeping, keeping, trying to put absorbance down to try to keep it contained because it will make a mess. Just know that at least on this one, it's gonna take a few cranking times because we didn't bring any fresh fuel to uh, prime the uh, filters. On a diesel, make sure you have a uh, fresh diesel fuel to put in because those ones are more susceptible, susceptible to uh, air locking themselves. So just gotta keep that in mind when you're changing your filters. As you can see, just gotta loosen them up. These ones weren't too terrible. At least this one wasn't too terrible. Not leaking, not leaking out too much. So now take the fuel. I'm gonna use the fuel that's you know inside this filter and not make a mess. Because I can prime the filter here like this. Best as I got. And it lubricates that. So now I can go through and screw it up. Clean up my mess. Get her tight. And it's all tight, ready to go. Got one more filter to go. This one's going to be a little more tricky because it's right here at the front. So I got to. I'm all up in here. Just prepping just in case I spill any fuel. Try to absorb it up. Okay. There we go. And now I just need the new filters. Be a lot better using, you know, fresh fuels, but this is what we got. There we go. Now just install this back where it came from. And make sure you definitely run the bilge pump, or not bilge pump, the uh, blower fan after you are done doing all this. So you can get all the fuel fumes out of your engine bay. Okay. And there. Now we just got to fill her with oil and we'll be done with this maintenance. Also, don't forget to log your hours, and if anything, keep a logbook of all the maintenance that is done on the, on your vessel. Always keep it, keep a, an idea of what you've done, so you know what to do next. Okay, now time to fill this up with oil. So it's going to be as simple as put the funnel in, make sure the funnel is nice and clean, and start filling with oil. Just go nice and slow. One jug down, we'll just have, now we just gotta keep a measurement of how much we put in. Okay. Pour about half the container in, now I'm gonna go and let it settle. Pull a dipstick, see where our level's at. Down. 
remember right at the... Looks like we're at the full, but you know. See when it give it a little bit further. Should be at the full mark, which means we're nice and full on the engine oil. And then we just have to run the engine, clean the bilge, and you're back out on the water.